Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, God bless you all. Thank y'all for joining this morning. For this treasure found. Come on, sometimes you got to give up everything. Never want you to leave, Lord. Good morning. So stay I don't want you to go. My heart is burning. Is Is your heart burning for the Lord this morning? On a beautiful Saturday morning. That's right, woman of God. Stay. Stay. Thank you, Patrice. God bless you all. Go ahead. Stay. Come on. You want the Lord to stay you to go my heart is yearning for your presence anybody want more I want more I want more I don't know about you, but I want more. Just a little bit won't do me. Come on, we finna talk about equity and wisdom today. Come on, that's a more. Come on, that's a plus. One more. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on, saints. I want more. I want more. Come on, look, I've always been high maintenance. Even when I was on drugs, I had a $1,000 a day crack cocaine habit. Come on, I used to drink $100 worth of liquor a day because I always had an appetite for more. Come on, so I'm not going to get over here in the kingdom of God and settle for the crumbs. Come on, baby, we want more. I want more. And John, the third chapter, he said the kingdom of God is given without measure. So all depends on how much you want from God. Jesus, I want more. I want more. Come on and ascend to the high place. Come on, come on, don't be afraid to go there. Come on, don't be afraid to tap in. Don't be afraid to press. I want more. I do not own the copyrights to this song. I want more. But I gotta have more. I want more. I want more Jesus I want more and because I want more guess what so I'll stay come on so I'll stay come on Peter say where else can I go 
Peter said, where else can I go, Lord? He said, you the one got the keys. He told his disciples, you got to eat my blood and drink my flesh. I'm sorry, eat, drink my blood and eat my flesh. Which means my body and my blood has to become your main resource. Your only resource. And they say this is a hard saying. And many followed him no more. And he told Peter, are you going to leave me too? Peter said, where am I going? Where am I going? Where are you going today? You're going to walk away from your inheritance? You're going to walk away from your birthrights? You're going to do like Esau and sell your birthrights for a bowl of soup? Praise the Lord. God bless y'all this morning. Thank y'all for joining today on a Saturday morning. God bless you all. I want to say Happy New Year. Happy New Year to everybody out there uh, that will look at this live, that will join the live, that will um, uh, just be a part of what God is doing through this video live this morning that is coming live to you from the living room of Apostle Mary Ann Richardson, God's servant, God's servant, amen, a woman of God that just love God. And so I wanted to come this morning, I wanted to share the good news with you this morning. Just wanted to come and share a word of encouragement. Wanted to come and share the gospel. You know, um, the gospel is what changes everything. The gospel, the Bible say that the Gentiles received their inheritance. They became partakers uh, of their inheritance through the gospel. So it is the gospel, y'all. It's so much power in the gospel. I know that people, you know, don't... Uh, really, really uh, elaborate a lot of times or sometimes we just don't even understand the power of the gospel. I was sharing with someone because we have been doing, we're on our 31-day wisdom challenge in New Hope Empowerment Center. And I'm telling you, God has been allowing us to dig deep. I mean, to go behind the, uh, it, come into his chambers. Let me just say it like that. He has allowed us to come into his chambers concerning wisdom concerning wisdom and concerning the mind of God. And we're, we're, we're dealing with wisdom, health, and wealth. And so we were talking this week about divine healing, divine healing. I'm not talking about your doctor, but I'm talking about divine healing actually means be to be connected to the supernatural power of God. And do you know that preaching alone, preaching alone with us receiving the gospel Amen. will bring healing to your body. It will bring healing to your mind. It will bring healing to every area of your life. So Proverbs, the fourth chapter say uh, that the word of God will become life to your flesh, to those that find it. See, you got to find it. You know, you got to find it. You got to come after God with everything. You got to want more. You got to want more. And then it talks about how the Bible say faith come by hearing. Hearing come by the word. How can they call upon him whom they have never heard? And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can he preach except he be sent? Everybody has not been sent. Even though people preach, everybody has not been sent. Anybody can pick up a mic. Anybody can, you know, release a scripture. But it takes a sent person to be able to cause the body to become sound. Because Proverbs 14 and 30 says, come on, healing comes in the form of soundness. So when your body is sound, because preaching the gospel will cause your body to be sound. It will cause your body to begin to line up with the word of God. And I also shared from over in Acts the 14 chapter, there was a man that was born lame from his mother's womb, had never walked, had never moved. But when Apostle Paul came on the scene, y'all don't want to have no church on an early Saturday morning here. But when Apostle Paul came on the scene, the Bible say that that man was a literally sitting on the edge of his seat as Paul preached the gospel as Paul expounded on the gospel. And it say Paul perceived that that man had faith. Paul perceived that that man had faith. And just through the preaching of the gospel, this man had never walked, had never, uh, was born like this from his mother's womb. The Bible say the man began to get up and leap. I'm not talking about Acts the third chapter. 
Talking about Acts the 14th chapter when Paul was over in the synagogue preaching the gospel. So you go in and look at it for yourself. You go in and research it for yourself. Don't just take my word for it, okay? But anyway, I want to share with you today uh, the form of equity. I want to talk about equity in wisdom. And I'm not going to be with you long on today, but I want to talk to you about having equity in 2024. 2024, you know, we come into 2024 and I want more and we come into 2024 and we have our resolutions and, you know, we have our little sayings and all of these things right here. But I want to challenge you in 2024, amen, to have equity, have equity in your life. And the Bible talks about equity. Solomon, who was, we know who Solomon was. We was Solomon was David's son, a man that was called to, uh, uh, to, to bring Israel out, to, uh, to be a leader. And he didn't have wisdom. But the Bible, and what I've been sharing with my people, even though Proverbs is primarily talking about wisdom, wisdom is used in the entire Bible. It is used throughout the entire Bible. But one of the sayings that Solomon wrote, and I'm going to go ahead and say this here and get out of your way today. But he talked about equity and wisdom. And he talks about the benefits of wisdom. That Let me tell y'all something. If you don't got wisdom, you ain't got nothing. And Solomon talks about the food so much in Proverbs and Ecclesiastic. Because we was born in an evil nature. So I know you may not want to accept this because I know you think you all this and a bag of chips. But how many know the Bible said we were all born fools? We were all born fools. We was all, all born alienated, separated in the wickedness of our mind from the commonwealth of Israel. The Bible said that we were also born dead in our trespasses and our sins. And so until Christ came and Christ came into our lives through the preaching of the gospel, come on, y'all, we were lost. We were lost. We were dead corpse. We were walking around in this world. We didn't even know why we existed. We had no understanding about life. We had no understanding about who God was. But then God comes with his infinite, profound wisdom. And he began to open up our eyes. And he began to cause us to see the beauty of life and the purpose of life and the reason that we were created in. Solomon said over in Ecclesiastes, the first chapter, now, this just blew my mind, y'all, but I'm a lover of the word. I study the word. I, I, I preach the word. That's right, woman of God, walking dead people. But listen at what Solomon said over in Ecclesiastes that had all of that wisdom. Solomon say, I did large projects. He said, I know what it was like to do large projects. He say, I know what is what he say, whatever my eyes saw that satisfied, that satisfied my flesh, that brought gratitude to my flesh. Solomon said, Guess what? He said, I went after it. I bought it. Solomon said, I had real estate. He said, I knew what it was like to be a realtor. You know, he said he had everything, everything. He said he had women. You know, he had the wisdom of God. He said he had gardens. He knew about animals. Come on. He knew about trees. Solomon was a scientist. Go read it for yourself in Ecclesiastes, the first chapter. He said, but in all of that, it was vanity. He said it was vanity. He say, and the greatest fulfillment that he found in life was to the purpose of God. Y'all don't, I think I need to say that again. He say, out of all that he had, the fulfillment that he found that made him whole, that made him secure, that made him, you know, gave him an identity. It was, uh, the purpose, the purpose of the purpose of God. And Solomon had 40 years and the Bible, I'm sorry, the Bible said he reigned for 40 years and he had no major wars. Come on, y'all got, see, you got to learn how to choose your battles. You got to learn how to choose your battles through wisdom. You got to learn that every battle ain't none of yours. You got to learn that every assignment ain't none of yours. Come on, you got to learn that every argument ain't none of yours. And Solomon learned that throughout wisdom. But one of the things and having a relationship with God as well. So one of the things I want to share with you today, I want to talk about equity and wisdom. And so Solomon says in Proverbs 1 and 3, well, let me, let me start at the first verse and I'm going to end at 3. He said, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, it say was to know wisdom. That was the purpose of, uh, 
That was the purpose of the, the Proverbs. It was to know wisdom. Come on, because you can be looking at a thing and don't even have no clue or uh, understanding of what you're looking at. Because guess what? God will hide it from you. Because God don't even give everybody his wisdom. Yeah, I know y'all don't want to hear that. You can have your own fleshly wisdom because James talks about two different types of wisdom. But the wisdom of God, it gives you knowledge. It says to know wisdom and instruction instructions. I know this is the beginning of the year and we start out, you know, God, I need instructions for my life. God, I need you to tell me which way I need to go. You know, and the Bible say in Proverbs 10 and 10, it say wisdom is for directions. Wisdom will give us direction. Wisdom will give us instructions on how to execute the plan of God, how to live our lives out, how to make wise decisions. And so we need that. And he say, uh, instruction and to proceed. The words of understanding. Y'all don't want to have no church right now. To perceive the words of understanding. I love what the Lord has blessed me with. The grace that's on my life. Inner healing and deliverance. You got to come to this workshop that I'm having um, uh, February. February the 3rd. And it's called emotionally. Emotionally free. I'm sorry. Emotionally fit. For the journey. I'm going to come back and do a video on that because there's so many details in that, but it's a blessing to be able to have an understanding of people's pain. How many know you can't trust everybody with your pain? Come on. And everybody don't understand your pain. And if people don't understand your pain, they may think that your pain is not important to them. And so because God would even place you in the midst of certain people, amen. Uh, and you would think that they will understand your pain until the process come, until the process come, until the patience come and the understanding come. And, you know, people will walk away and they'll leave you, you know, or they would just not have time for you. But the understanding of this, Solomon said, talking about the words of understanding. And it's the number three. It say to receive. Somebody say receive. It means to receive the instructions of wisdom. And it talks about justice and judgment and equ equity come on it means um uh, to receive the instructions of wisdom justice judgment and equity and so i told my church you know god is not allowing us to tap into the mind of god god is not allowing us to tap into the um to the uh to, into the to come into his chambers and to give us insight beyond what we might see in the natural. Because a lot of times we try to look at things in the natural and we try to judge that. But the Bible say that wisdom will cause you to judge. Wisdom will, and you know, I, I, I hear y'all right now, I hear the religious spirit. Oh, the Bible say don't judge no man because you don't want to be judged. That's not what the words say for the saints. The Bible say that the saints should judge all things and we will judge all things. And he said the word of God will allow us to judge what is God and what is not God. So we need to know what is God and what not God. It may look like God. It may sound like God, but I do have the authority to judge that according to the mind and the will of God and according to the nature of God, according to the character of God. So a lot of times, you know, you don't want to walk around and say, you know what, this look like. No, you want to be sure. You want to be certain. And I hear the devil right now that ain't nobody perfect, but the devil is a lie. The Bible say, Paul say, we speak wisdom to those that are perfect, which means those that are mature. Amen. So you have to grow up. There'll come a point in your life. You can't stay in the kiddie pool. You can't stay walking around with the spirit of religion. You cannot stay walking. You, I'm talking about myself too as well. We cannot continue to walk around as dumb Christians. Amen. That we don't know what's going on in the world and we're afraid to judge and we're afraid to say something about this and that because we, we don't want to deal with the spirit of rejection and we want everybody to like us and you know you want everybody to, you know, to flatter you and you want everybody to know carrying this gospel, you're going to be hated by many. Hello, carrying this gospel, you're going to be hated by many. But Solomon said, this is the purpose of wisdom is to give us instructions that I'm going to have to be walking around wandering in the wilderness. Amen. Like the children of Israel did for 40 years. Come on. They wondered and they never made it in and they all died in the same. Come on. They all died out. That whole generation died out in the wilderness because they were stubborn. They was, they was not willing to listen at God. They was not willing to have insight in God. They was not willing to listen at the man of God who was Moses at that time. 
They refused to listen at the counsel and the will of God. So they all died in the wilderness. And not only did they die, come on, their children died too. But then God gave Moses a word. I think it's over in Deuteronomy 1 and 6. He said, tell the children, and then Deuteronomy the second chapter as well. He said, tell the children of Israel, you've been in this place long enough. You've been in this place long enough. That's the whole message right there. You've been in this place long enough. Tell them, I say, turn. Turn and go in the direction that I'm taking them so they can possess the land, so they can possess their inheritance, not only them, but their seed as well. So when you go in, your children should be going with you. When you go in, come on, your inheritance should be going with you. You sh and I should be preparing legacies. Come on, you and I should be demonstrating the gospel that people will be able to see God and not just talk about him because this thing come with a demonstration. Y'all, I'm getting so excited over here. I'm getting real, real hot in the realm of the spirit. Amen. But this is what happened. Amen. When you never knew who God was and then God come and show you the equity that you have in him and equity come through wisdom. So Solomon say to receive justice. Come on. What is justice? Come on. When I've been done wrong in the realm of the spirit, when I have been with the enemy, the oppressor has oppressed me because of ignorance. When the enemy has oppressed me because of foolishness. When the enemy has oppressed me because I made the wrong decisions. Come on. And now I have brought a place of uh, destruction. A place of destruction has come up on my life. A place of calamity. Come on. A place of declining. A place of being defeated. You got so many believers out there. Y'all know I'm talking to you. Amen. This is a good word. Thank you, woman of God. It's, I know. You know what? And it is a good word. Because I'm telling you, God has been blowing us up in our wisdom challenge. And I'm telling you, we've been getting up every morning at six o'clock. I'm getting up at three. Sometimes getting up at three o'clock in the morning just to dig and study the word to be able to have a word to bring to the people. Because that's what Paul did. Paul transformed that church from a place of darkness and he brought those people into the light. But let me get back into wisdom right here. It's a justice, judgment, and equity. Now, let me tell you what the word equity means. Equity means your value. It means you got to know wisdom will give you your value. Come on, wisdom will show you who you are. Wisdom will reveal who you are. Wisdom will cause a prophetic veil, reveal to take place. Wisdom will cause you to, 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 to jack up that environment that you came from. Wisdom will, I mean, equity will cause you to, uh, to annihilate. Come on, your past. Wisdom, justice. Come on, it will cause you to show you the valuable that you are a gem. Come on, that you are a diamond in the rough. Come on, that you were a hidden treasure that God hid on the backside of the mountain for such a time as this. That God hid you, come on, in his word and God hid you. Come on, in the quietness and in the secretness or in that safe place or you're just studying and you're just, you know, you're just saturating God. You're just meditating on God. And even sometime in that place, it will cause us to wonder, God, did you really, really call me? God, what is my purpose in the earth? But God says, I'm getting you into a place. I've called you into the, the, the secret place because I am preparing you for the prophetic reveal. Come on. I am preparing you to be a prophetic expression for me. I am preparing you. Come on to be a battle like in my hand. I am preparing you. Come on to be a champion that would take down Goliath. Come on, baby. I am preparing you, but I got to make sure that you know your value and value comes through equity. It reminds me of my house. I bought my house. I've been here almost 40 years. I bought this house and the value, the, the price that I paid for it then. Come on, y'all. Y'all know what the market is like out there today. Hello. Y'all know what the market is like out there today. And then because I have remodeled it inside and out. Come on. It causes the value to go up. But what did I do? I had to invest. You think, oh, you think I did it with no money, right? Oh, you think it, oh, you think God just came down here and did it? Because that's what people say. Oh, I'm just waiting on God. I'm just waiting on God to come down here to do it. Baby, God said, no, 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 no. I am waiting on you to come and manifest my word. I'm waiting on you to walk in faith because faith without works is dead. So you need to uh, extract that from your vocabulary. You need to extract that from your archives that I'm just, oh, I'm just waiting on God. God said, no, I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on God to give me this job. I'm waiting on God to give me this house. God said, I'm waiting on you to go fill the application out. 
Come on, God said, I'm waiting on you to get up and go fill the application out. Oh, God, gonna give me a refrigerator. Yeah, I'm waiting on you to go to Bangkok to get it. I'm waiting on you to go to whatever your store is in your region to go get it. Come on, so we got to execute that out of our vocabulary that I'm just waiting on God. But the equity, the investments that I made in my home, come on, it has caused my homes to go extremely to another price. Even my, uh, my lab in the back, when I bought that, it was a 16 by 20 shed and I had it renovated. I had it renovated. Come on, for, for, for the purpose of my study. And guess what? When I got it, I had to go to the city, first of all, to get a permit to even have it put on my property. And then I had to fill out that permit. And then once that permit, I mean, once that shed, that shed was placed in my yard, they had to make sure that it was, uh, it was structured, the infrastructure was in place. They had to make sure that it was secure from a certain amount of wind. So when the storm and the hurricane come, come on, that that would be protection, that it would not be all over the place, that it could hurt somebody else's property or it could cause damage or it would not be able to withstand the, the winds and the power of the hurricane. That's a whole nother um, message right there. But then after all of that was taking place and when the building inspector came and inspected it and it passed, guess what? I had to take that paperwork. I had to take those documents to the county because the county would now add it to my property value and it caused my property value to go up. So it gave me more value. It gave me more equity in my property. Amen. So that's one of the definitions for equity, equity. And Solomon said it, it's a wisdom gives you equity. Wisdom gives you your value y'all. And it's a wisdom gives you ownership with, I mean, uh, equity gives you ownership. You take ownership, you got to take ownership of your destiny in 2024. You can walk around all you want to and think that this thing just going to drop out the sky. You can walk around all you want to unconscious, unconscious in, in God. You can walk around all, all you want to in a trance thinking things just going to happen. Ain't nothing going to happen, baby, till you get up and put your hands to the gospel plow. You're going to have to put your hands to the gospel plow. You're going to have to be the one to make the decisions. You're going to have to be the one to walk away from dead situations. You're going to have to be the one to walk away from those things that has no equity in it. You're going to have to be the one to make the decision what is important and what is not important. You're going to have to be the one to make the definition of how far you go in God. You're going to have to be the one to take ownership. Equity means ownership. Amen. One of my prophets in training. One of my prophets in training, uh, uh, she carried the line out this week and the, the girl was so powerful with what she brought. Amen. And she came out the gates running y'all. She came out the gates running, but guess what? When she first came to my church, when she first came to my church, matter of fact, when she first contacted me, amen, she was afraid to call me, but she texted me and said, God say, I need an apostle in my life. And I need Apostle Mary Richardson. Well, I already knew what she was talking about because I already have equity. I have equity and I have value to be able to understand the wisdom of God and be able to understand the mind of God and be able to have insight into certain situations and certain behaviors. But anyway, the young lady came about four years ago and I'm telling you, she's on fire. She came out the gates and she came out the gate saying, Good, guess what? I come this morning to bring equity. Y'all don't have no, y'all don't want to have no church. I come this morning, amen, to say I'm taking ownership for my destiny. Come on. The Bible say fools have nothing to say at the gates. And when the woman of God came, come on, she was loaded. Come on, she was piking it. She wasn't saying the same thing over and over and over. She was not speaking out of a place of vanity. Come on, she was not speaking out of a place of foolishness. Come on, the girl came out the gates with equity. She came out with the verbiage, with the language, with the mind of God. Amen. She came out as a transformer. She came out as a reform, as a reformer. Come on, with the wisdom and with the mind of God. Amen. With something to say. Come on, God want to give you a seat at the table, but you got to have something to say. God want to give you more, but you got to have something to say. You don't want to be in 2024 telling people when people come to you with their problems. Baby, just pray. Baby, just pray. I already been praying. Do you have any answers? Do you have any equity? Can you help me see my value? Can you help me take ownership 
for what mom, what God said about me before my mama and daddy got together. Can you help me take ownership? Can you help me walk in my true identity? Can you help me open up my mouth and not be afraid to say, I am an apostle. I am a prophet. I'm a teacher. I'm a pastor. I'm an evangelist. I have this type of gift. I have this type of grace. Can you, can you, can you help me stop going around and around the same mountain saying, oh no, oh no. Can you help me stop saying, oh, I'm just a part of, I'm just a part of the choir. You know, can you help me stop saying, amen, all of these generic, all of these generic terminology. And you've been in the church all your life. You've been in the church for a very, very long time. Come on, Jesus trained and equipped his disciples for three years. Come on, y'all. Come on. He, 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 uh, uh, he went into the temple and that fig tree, he was going to cut it down. He was going to speak to it and keep matter of fact, he did curse it. But at one time he said, he told the, uh, the, 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 uh, the owner of it, let me water it. I'm sorry. The owner said, let me water it. Let me fertilize it for one more year. Come on. Jesus said, when it come back, cause figs are supposed to give birth in three years. So you can't be in the kingdom of God. But when he came back, the tree was dead. You cannot be in the kingdom of God going around that same mountain over and over and over again. And you do not know what you have been called to do. You do not know your purpose in life. You have not connected to the right host plant. So that right host plant, amen, can cause you to begin to eat and begin to flourish and to begin to come forth in God. So equity means taking ownership. It means I take ownership. Come on, you got skin in the game. Equity gives you skin in the game. It gives you skin in the game, baby. It gives you a seat at the table. It gives you a voice in wisdom. It gives you a mind in wisdom. It will cause people to begin to come. It will, be, it will begin to cause people to begin to seek you out. People will begin to seek you out because let me tell you something. The body of Christ is in trouble. I know we go to church. But let me tell you something. The body of Christ is in trouble. You got so many people in the body of Christ that are being defeated. Come on, living in sin and cannot overcome certain behaviors, cannot overcome certain habits. The Bible says they that overcome, baby, we will be we will sit in that seat of authority. So you can't tell me that God would not allow us to become an overcomer and to become a game changer. Come on, because I'm a living testimony. I'm a living testimony. 24 years of drugs and alcohol, a thousand dollar day crack cocaine habit, dropped out of school in the eighth grade, baby, tested for on my, tested for my GED on a first grade level, went to prison, went to jail. Come on. Just life was just all jacked up, was molested and all of these different things. Come on. Now God has raised me up to be a game changer. And now I got skin in the game, y'all. Come on. I got equity. I got equity in the, in the game. Come on. God is doing some great things in 2024. Amen. God has been doing some great things from the day we got saved though, for real. Amen. We just was not aware of it. And because a lot of us did not seek more, a lot of us did not seek out the equity that God had for us. A lot of us did not seek out, amen, the wisdom of God and, 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 and to go into that new place to allow God to change us, to become another person. Come on. The Bible say when Joseph brother saw him, see a lot of us are afraid of that. We're afraid to trust God with our lives. We're afraid to, 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 you know, to give it all to God. Come on. The Bible say Joseph brothers put him in a pit, come on and left him for dead. Come on. But the Bible said when they saw him again, they didn't even know who he was. They didn't even know who he was. Come on. God will change you, baby. Come on. The Bible, when Paul, God knocked Paul off the, off his beast on the road to Damascus. Come on. Paul came preaching the gospel and the people were afraid of him. It took Barnabas to say he's now one of us because God would change the game. He would change your life. He will cause you for people to look at you. And they don't even know who you are anymore. Remember the blind man, the, 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 son, the man that was born blind, the son that was born blind, I think over in John, the ninth chapter. And they said, who's seeing your mother, your father? Ain't nobody seeing. This was just for the glory of God. And they say it, they didn't even know that was him again. Come on. After he had got delivered. So once God deliver you, people won't know who you are. They won't. They will try to hold you in your past for who you are. But when you have value and when you have equity and when you have ownership, you do not allow people's opinion to shape you. You do not allow people's opinion to control you. You do not allow people's opinion, amen, to define you. Amen. God word defines us. God word takes us into new places. It takes us to live in a place of supernatural. It takes us to live in a place that we've never, ever been before. Y'all I'm telling you, this thing is so powerful. Equity, taking ownership of your destiny. 
uh, uh, equity also calls you to be wise. It calls you to be wise. Now, Solomon, if I'm not mistaken, I think about 52 times in Proverbs, Solomon talks about a fool. Now, you, when you call a person a fool, those are normally fighting words. Amen. But when you call it, Solomon called them fools because they was a simple minded person. They was a simple minded person. They had no understanding. They were so they were so uh, in love with their own opinion. They were so in love with what they thought. They were so foolish. Amen. That they was uh, uh, st stuck. And the Bible say the only way you deal with a fool is through pain. Y'all don't want, y'all know, y'all ain't ready for equity in 2024. The only way you deal with a fool is through pain. So that's why you got people that's in jail today because they wouldn't listen. That's why you got people that die early, premature death because they wouldn't listen. That's why you got people, amen, that are living a life of defeat right now because they wouldn't listen. That's why you got people that's on medication talking about schizophrenic, bipolar, and all of those different situations or whatever. Some of them because they wouldn't listen because those mental issues come from, from a whole different uh, 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 nature as well. So uh, it's a whole nother message. But that's, uh, but that's why you got people, amen, that's going around and around in the same uh, 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 mountain. They have no value. That's why you have people that have no equity. They have nothing to show for their salvation. They go to church and they come back and they live the same life. They have nothing. They robbed Peter to pay Paul and they owe both of them. They got bad credit. They jacked up. Amen. They, 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 they don't have relationships. I mean, they just don't even know who they are. That's a fool. A simple-minded person will believe everything. That is a fool. A fool has his own opinion. You got to go in Proverbs and search out the word fool. And the Bible say, don't even put honor on a fool. And here we are. We ordained fools. We ordained people that have no wisdom, no knowledge. And we highlight them fools. Amen. That is not walking in the order of God. Come on. God say, this is the year of equity. This is the year of understanding your value. Wisdom will cause you to be, I mean, equity calls you to be wise and not only do it cause you to be wise, this is my last one. It calls you to be successful. It calls you to be successful. And when I say successful, I mean there is a diversity of being successful. Successful means, yes, I have prosperity. You know, I'm able to pay my bills and I'm able to live a very comfortable life. And I ain't got to wake up. I ain't got to go to sleep at night. Trouble about how to pay my bills. Because guess what? I'm a tither, baby. I'm a tithe. I got skin in the game. Come on. I got equity. So when I run into a challenge or whatever, I just need to go. Wisdom need to go say, okay, Holy Ghost, what's going on? Because he said, I will. He said, when you give your tithes and your offering, he said, I will open up a window of heaven and pull you out blessings that you don't have room enough to receive. But you, when you take those tithes and you give all those tithes to the world and you break God off and you cut God short. Amen. And then when you get in trouble, God said, I'll allow the, the, the locusts and the canker worm to come in and eat up your harvest. Y'all don't want to believe the word today, but the word is true. Wisdom is true. Wisdom will cause you to be successful in your health. Come on. I'm 67 years old and I take no medication. I take no medication. I take a supplement, but I take no medication. That is a part of my success in wisdom because his word was life to me and I found it. And it caused my health to walk in, to cause my flesh to begin to line up with the word of God. That I don't walk in unforgiveness. I don't walk in bitterness. I don't walk in insecurity. I don't walk in jealousy. I don't walk in strife. I don't walk in malice. I don't walk in slandering people. I don't live my life like that. Come on, I want success. I want a sound heart. I want a sound place. Just on last night, I had a, um, that was something that took place and someone, they did something that violated me. And they say, they called me back and they say, will you please forgive me? I told them, I have no problem in forgiving you because forgiveness, you're, you're a human being. Everybody's allowed to make mistakes. Everybody go make some more mistakes, but we got to be quickly to forgive. The Bible says, do not let the sun go down on your, on your anger or your unforgiveness. Because when you go to sleep, that stuff get into the subconscious part of your mind. And you make up in your mind, I'm not going to forgive. 10, 20, 30 years later, you see that same person and you wonder why you're so irritated when you're around that person. You're wondering why, you know, you're just so frustrated that you just don't want nothing to do with that person or, you know, and then you open up the doors for sicknesses and disease, y'all. You open up the doors for sicknesses and diseases. You open up the door to not live a successful life. Amen. When you don't have equity. When you not, when you are not successful, come on, God did not call us into this thing. Amen. The Bible says we should be the head and not the tail. 
The Bible says in Exodus 15 and 26, he told Moses, you tell the children of Israel, if they obey me and keep my commandment, all these diseases that I put up on the Egyptian, they won't even be able to come near your house. You can live in the secret place. Come on, baby. You can live. Come on, in a place, amen, of your soul prospering. Come on, that you're not living in depression and you're not living up under the spirit of the oppressor and you're not always, you know, sick and you're not always sad and, you know, you're just not always just, just pitiful. Sometimes people in body of Christ, you're just pitiful. And that's, that ought not to be. That ought not to be because the Bible say equity will cause us. You go look up the word. Don't take my, don't take my word for it. You go look it up. You go research it. Equity will cause us to be successful. Successful, it will cause us to be wise. I don't know about you, but I ain't finna be nobody fool. I ain't finna be no silly woman. I ain't finna be no dumb person. Amen. Those days are over. I heard Leandra say better days are coming. Better days are already here, y'all. So I want to encourage somebody today out there. I came to encourage you this morning in 2024. You're going to be seeing more of me. I want you to go like my business page, Apostle Mary Richardson. I'm going to be sending you out a request, but I am building up that business page because I want to lead you to some of the resources that I have. And I want to create more content. Amen. That will last. Amen. So you know, you got to have a strategy when you're apostolic, y'all. You got to have a strategy. And that's just the nature of an apostolic person. They're very innovative. Come on. They're very, um, you know, they're game changers. You know, they're very strategic. You know, they're always witty. The Bible say in Proverbs 8 and 12, he say witty dwell with prudence and knowledge. And, you know, so God is just always downloading stuff to us. But God say, I ain't going to give you nothing else when you ain't did nothing with what you got. But I pray that your year in 2024 will be a year of equity. It will be a year of value that you will take ownership for your destiny. And I need you to know that when heaven bites you, it's not a devil on this earth. I ain't going to say the devil in hell because Satan ain't in hell. According to Peter, the Bible says he go to and fro, up and down the earth, seeking whom he may devour. The Bible says when Solomon, when he got kicked out of heaven, um... He, say, uh, he brought a third of the angels with him. So they are roaming this earth to and fro, up and down the earth every day, seeking whom they may devour. But when God bites you, when heaven bites you, there is nothing or nobody that can stop you. You are unstoppable. You become a warrior. Your mind become trained. You become skilled in God and you allow nothing or nobody to take you down. You don't just be tolerated, but you be in places. God will place you among those that will celebrate who you are. You no longer have to sit on the bike road. God said, I will escort you to the front of the line. And you no longer have to introduce yourself. God said, this time I'm going to do the introduction. Amen. So I want to encourage you today before I leave this live. I want to encourage you today in 2024 to partner with me. Partner with me. And Patrice, if you can put my cash app on the screen today, it is cash app apostolic woman. I'm not asking for anybody to sow a seed. I'm asking you to partner. I want you to partner with me. I got some people that's already, I got one lady. I don't even know who she is. Amen. She just, she just started partnering with me about six months ago. Amen. But whatever the Lord lays upon your heart for 2024, I would love for you to partner with me to continue to help me to pre preach this gospel, to continue to help me to carry out this gospel. Because you know what? The gospel is so powerful. Tomorrow, our training is talking about the household of God and it's talking about Cornelius. And how many know that the Gentiles, they was waiting on Paul, y'all. They could not, the Jews, they made fun of the Gentiles. They mocked them Gentiles. But those Gentiles could not come forth until Apostle Paul came on the scene. So if you don't got no apostle in your life, baby, I encourage you, you need to get connected. I encourage you to get connected with an apostle, one that has been called by God, not one that just walking around with a title because they have no identity, but I'm talking about one that has the fruit, one that has the evidence, amen, one that has a proven ministry, amen, it proves a proven commission, amen, that they have been called and chosen and have been commissioned by God, amen, you get with one of those, and I'm telling you, it's going to revolutionize your life. So I want to encourage you to partner with me. Partner with me, amen, in this gospel. And you can do that 
by Cash App, Apostolic Woman. Cash App, yeah, Apostolic Woman, Cash App, Apostolic Woman, amen. So I'm going to pray with you and I'm going to get up out of here, y'all, because I got things to do. Today is Saturday and this is the day the Lord has made, y'all, and I'm going to rejoice and I am going to be glad in it, amen. So I don't know how to put my Cash App on the screen, amen, but if one of you all heard me and if you don't mind, amen, if you would just put that in the comment section for me, Apostol Cash App, Apostolic Woman, Amen. I was so greatly appreciated. Amen. And so, Father, we do thank you for your word on today. God, we thank you that you say your word would not return unto you void. And so, Father, I pray for every person that will come in and look at the video. I, I pray for every person that will come in and look at the replay. Lord, I pray for those that have even been engaging in the replay. I thank you for those that th this has been a, a Mary and a Martha moment for them. God, I thank you that this is a time. I'm sorry, Mary and Elizabeth. A Mary and Elizabeth moment. Lord God, that something has been resurrected in them. Something has been stirred. Something that was not moving has been moved. Thank you for the impartation that has went into the lives of your people. Those that received this impartation today in the name of Jesus that will cause them to manifest another level of your glory that will cause them to manifest another part of your nature. For your word said we are partakers of the nature of Christ. And so, Father, I do thank you today that 2024 will be the year of equity for your people. They will see their value. They will see their worth. They will take ownership, God, and they will come out the gates. They will, they will take down the spirit of fear. They will take down the spirit of intimidation, the spirit of witchcraft, the spirit of control, the spirit of a mind-binding spirit. Amen. The spirit of afraid to step out for more. The spirit in the name of Jesus that has hindered them from causing them to be what you have caused them to be. That, that, that has caused them to not to be emotionally fit in a healthy way that they could be able to run this race and they could run a marathon in you, God, in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we do thank you. We honor you. We glorify you today for your wisdom. We thank you for the mind of God. We thank you that we will make wise decisions. We will not be fools. Your words say in Proverbs 19 and 2 that fools rush in. We pray, Father God, that this will be the year that we will be solid. This will be the year, God, that we will bring forth fruit. This will be the year that our value will increase our understanding, our wisdom, and our knowledge. We will be people of intelligence. We will not just have academics, but we will have have intelligence, God. We will be those, Lord God, that others will begin to seek out in the name of Jesus, that we will solve hard problems. We will solve hard cases in the mighty name of Jesus, that we will bring a resolution to certain situations in the name of Jesus, where the enemy has come in and violated your people. God, we thank you for the army of God that is coming forth, God. We come with our mar marching orders today. We come making a sound today, and we declare and we decree that in the realm of the spirit, that enemy will hear the sound, and it will be a sound from heaven. It will be a sound of the trump, God. It will be a sound in the name of Jesus that will cause the enemy, amen, to lead the spoils and we will begin to inherit. We will begin to gather those that are that inheritance. And so I thank you for all of those that will become partners with me in this gospel, Lord God. Even as Paul prayed, he prayed for the uh, the for the, uh, the the Philippians church as they became partners with him, God. They became the Philippians church actually, according to uh, Philippians 1 and 7, actually became partakers of the apostolic anointing that was on his life because they partner with him in this gospel. So as they partner with me in this kingdom, uh, as I move forward in the name of Jesus, God, I speak the partaking anointing that's on my life, God, that it will actually begin to fall upon their life. It will begin to in, be imparted. It will begin to manifest. It will be like the wind. We don't know where the wind comes from, but they will begin to feel the effect of the apostolic authority in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we thank you. That place of dominion, that place of access, that you would give them access in the places, God, that they have been shut out, that you would give them places of dominion in seats of authority where the enemy has been occupying, that those seats will become unoccupied in the name of Jesus, Lord God, through the justice, through the revelation, through the knowledge, through the understanding, through the equity of who you are. So I say, God, bless you today. 
I encourage you to go into the house of the Lord on tomorrow. Find you a church. Amen. Where somebody is preaching the gospel. Find you a church where somebody is going to hold you accountable. Find you a church where somebody is not going to allow you to just live in sin and do what you want to do. But they're going to cause you to, 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 to come up to a standard. They're going to hold you accountable for who God has called you to be. Because you're not going to get what God has for you playing around with the devil. Amen. You got to come out this year and you got to come out fighting. You got to come out with equity. You got to come out taking ownership. Amen. You got to come out seeing your value to know that you are worth more than what you have settled for in 2023 and the years behind you as you continue to move forward. So God bless you all. Thank y'all for joining today. This has been your girl, Apostle Mary Richardson. Amen. And I am the apostolic woman. Go like my page, Apostle Mary Richardson. I will be sending a lot of you all, um, Invites, invites, uh, uh, join that page because in February, I'm going to start coming from that page. Amen. Because like I say, God has given me a strategy and it is going to help me and it's going to help you. Equity means I'm not afraid to invest my money in my future. So don't be ashamed. I mean, don't be, don't be scared. You pay your doctor, you pay your lawyer. Come on, you give the, the, the hair store all your, you know, a lot of money. We spend a lot of money in food. We spend a lot of money in a lot of stuff. Amen. This is going to be the year that we're going to learn equity and equity is going to separate you. Equ equity is going to separate you. Amen. From the mediocre. Equity is going to separate you. My first year in the gospel, I spent over a thousand dollars. Come on in books. Come on in curriculum. Y'all seen my layout on social media. I invested in, I even, I even went and invested in a 16 by 20 shed. And renovated the whole thing. So I would have a place of study. I would have a place where I can go and collaborate with God. You got to invest in your future. If you want to go higher in God. It's not going to come just like that. Amen. You got to invest. And I want you to partner with me today. In this gospel. In Jesus name. God bless y'all. But guess what? This ain't going to be the last time you see me. But once again, happy new year to you. I pray that this would be a year. Amen. That God would take you into his chambers and that God will release you to come out into the world. Amen. To do exploits, to do miracles, signs, wonders, and just the, the, the miraculous in God. Amen. So God bless y'all and y'all have a great day. I got to go, but I will be back in Jesus name. Blessings on y'all.